All right, as we get started with the AZ-800 course, it's kind of fitting that we really start with Active Directory because really Active Directory forms pretty much the underpinnings of Windows Server 2022 and all the versions before it really uh, because Active Directory is responsible for so many things in a Windows computing environment. So Active Directory, also known as Active Directory Domain Services or ADDS, uh, this is really just a structured data store of objects. So you may have already had experience with Active Directory. You may already be very familiar with some of those things. If that's the case, we'll just kind of review this real quick for you. Uh, but for some of the rest of you that are getting started with Windows Server and getting started in an Active Directory environment, uh, you might need to know some of this, okay? This is going to be kind of an overview of some of the things that we'll be covering later on in this course, okay? First of all, it's going to be where the users are stored, where the user accounts are stored, mostly. Mostly. <laughs> Why do I say that? You can't actually store a user in Active Directory, but you can store their account in Active Directory. And this would include everything, such as uh, their username, their password. Uh, you may choose to include an email in there, uh, you know, which department they work in, their address, uh, all kinds of things you can put in there. Uh, but the main things that we generally think of in terms of the user account is, of course, going to be the username and password. And the reason why that's significant is because that will then be used to log on that user and so that they can access resources either on their own local computer, like a Windows 11 computer, for example, or elsewhere throughout the entire environment. And also, the computer accounts will be stored there as well. The computers will have a unique identifier. Users and computers both have a unique identifier associated with them. And you may not know it, but computers actually do log on as well. Uh, there's not somebody that types in a password there, of course, for the computer, uh, but the computer does have a randomly generated password that gets refreshed every so often, and uh, so it does actually have uh, an identity, a security identity there. And then, of course, we will have groups. These are all things that are going to be part of the data store in Active Directory. So you can take users and put those into groups. You can take computers and put those into groups, and you can take groups and put other groups inside of other groups or nesting groups is another way to say that. And the basic idea there with the groups, of course, is that it's going to make most administration simpler later on down the road when you start to assign resources to, uh, assign permissions to various resources, such as file permissions, for example. There are other types of objects that we think of there as well that do go into Active Directory. We're not gonna exhaust every type of an object that can go in there, but you can have printers that appear in Active Directory. That makes them easier to find for your users, especially in larger organizations where they might be going into a, a building in a campus that they've never been in before and they need to find a printer. Well, you can make them easy to find there in Active Directory. Shares can also be easily found in Active Directory. They don't have to be put in Active Directory, but certainly that's a possibility. And again, makes it very searchable. That's a big part of what this data store is, by the way, is that it's, it's gonna be more easily searchable uh, by its very nature. We'll talk about that again here in a moment. And then we have something called group policy objects or GPOs. This is actually a combination of both a, a file location as well as in Active Directory, uh, group policy objects do exist there as well. And group policies really centrally control most everything that the user can see or do on their computers, okay? Uh, as well as many other things re related to Windows, okay? So a lot of things involved there, very, very powerful, thousands of different separate settings that can be configured in a group policy. And I'll be talking about that in much more detail later on in this course. Like I said, it is easily searchable. A big part of the reason for that is something called the global catalog, which has a uh, every object that's in Active Directory. And it, because of the nature of it and the way that it's stored, it's it's very easy and fast to search against. Your users don't have to know about that. Even we as administrators don't have to know that we're searching using the global catalog. We just do a search and, and we get results, thankfully. Active Directory also has security features integrated directly into it. So for example, when these users or computers log on or we get our credentials checked to see if we are members of certain groups, one of the things that's gonna be done involving that will be a security check against our tickets. You know, there's there's tickets that are issued in this, and that's going way beyond what we need to talk about right now, really. Uh, but they're Kerberos tickets is what they're called, and users are issued Kerberos tickets when they log on. Uh, they're very secure tickets that can be used, and it's, it's just all integrated into Active Directory. And Active Directory, by its very nature, is logical and hierarchical. So we'll see this as we go on throughout this course, but for example, you might have at the top of your domain here, in, in, in kind of diagram fashion, 
normally domains are represented by a triangle like this, and you may have domains that have child domains like this, so not be another like a subdomain or a child domain that appears underneath there, for example. And then also within this, you'll also have things such as organizational units. And an organizational unit might be a, you know a state or a city. Let's say this is Phoenix, and within Phoenix you might have a department. So maybe this is HR. Okay, and that that's another organizational unit. You may also have other OUs underneath Phoenix. You know, I don't know, for the IT department. All different kinds of departments, different purposes for these organizational units and so forth. But the point I'm making here is they're all hierarchical, okay? Same with our domains and our child domains if we have any. And it's important that they are logical and hierarchical so that they're easier to think through when you're trying to find things. I mean, yes, they're searchable, but it also helps just as humanly speaking to be able to see the kind of hierarchy that's involved there as well. Uh, there's something else in Active Directory called the schema. Uh, we're not going to delve into that right now as, as well, but it's kind of the skeletal structure for things that appear within Active Directory. So, for example, if you had a user account, how do we know what we can put into a user account? Well, I mentioned a few things we could put in there earlier, right? Username, of course, a password, of course. Uh, but how about other things, such as which department they work in? Well, the reason why that appears in the user account, and you don't have to put it in, you don't have to enter in something for that, but you can't. The reason why that even appears is because of the schema. It kind of defines all of the various fields, if you will, all the various check marks and so forth that you can define within a user account. It defines all of the objects. So an object would be something like a user account, for example, or a computer account. And then the attribute would be the specific item that you can select or configure within the user account, within the computer account or whatever it is. And they are also effectively replicated. So all of this stuff that we have, let's say that we have this, you know, this domain here. In most organizations, you're going to have a domain, but you're going to have a domain controller here as well. And the domain controller is what stores your Active Directory domain services. Okay, that's all stored usually on a domain controller. But normally, you have more than one uh, because for failover as well as load balancing and all kinds of other reasons. But you'd have more than one. And a copy of your users, for example, on this domain controller, as well as everything else that's involved in Active Directory, would be copied over to this other domain controller. It's an exact copy. And it's a peer domain controller. One is not superior to the other in any way. Later on, we'll be talking about something called flexible single master operations. And these are also known as FISMOs. And they are special roles that each one might have. But as far as the accounts go, one is not really special compared to another, and they are called peer domain controllers because they're on kind of a peer level. But regardless, these peer domain controllers have a replication mechanism kind of built into them where anything that changes, maybe this user right here changes their password, well, we need to have the, that reflected over on the other copy of the user account over on this other domain controller, right? That happens almost instantly in a single site within a single domain. So there's really not uh, hardly any lag time there at all. And if you have a domain controller let's say that's in a different city somewhere else in a different site, there's also an efficient replication mechanism that makes sure that that's still replicated over there in a practical and timely fashion. And that's adjustable a little bit here as well. Again, a lot of these things are just overview topics. We could get into more details with some of these things a little bit later on. Uh, but that's just kind of an idea of what Active Directory Domain Services does and the kind of things that it's used for. All right, so that's it for this nugget. In the next nugget, we'll be talking about some things that are new in Active Directory domain services. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.